So hello and welcome to the session of our working group, Future of Work. I, at the beginning, I want to seize the opportunity to um, say a big thank you to all of you who contributed to the work of this, um, of this initiative. First of all, all the experts of our working group, some of them will be attending from remote, um, and also other experts who provided feedback, provided um, um, encouragement and so forth, also from beyond the working group. And also, um, last but not least, the Center of Expertise in Paris, um, Catherine and Edouard and all your um, colleagues from back in Paris, thank you for your brilliant support. My name is Matthias Peisner, together with my esteemed colleague, um, Professor Uday Desai. I'm co-chairing this um, working group, and um, let's see what is on the agenda for today. After a brief overview of um, the working group, we will present three current projects, and two of these um, presentations will be done online, um, and the third one will be given by um, Uday about the Living Lab. We have um, a brief slot for questions and answers after each of the presentations, like two or three minutes, and in the end we will have an overall um, discussion, let's say five minutes, um, for the general questions and answers. <clears throat> so maybe a quick overview of the Future of Work Working Group. Um, in the beginning of this year, we started a strategy process in order to define our mission and our vision. And if you want to, um, to put it into one sentence, what is the major mission of our working group? We said it's, we want to shape an inclusive future of work through AI, through AI that should really benefit everyone. And for that purpose, we are analyzing how AI development and deployment can affect the working environments we are analyzing the current status, but we also want to get insights about how we can shape this future of work with AI also for the future. The second um, thing is that we want to help employers, those who are responsible for the design and deployment of AI services by providing them guidance, expertise, but we also want to help workers to uh, participate in this design process um, by providing them ins um, information about what is possible with AI, where the limits, and uh, to help them to really um, yeah, be involved in, 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 in um, co-creation processes to shape the future of workplaces with AI. And the third topic, and this is a very special um, interest of our working group, is we want to focus also on the education and training to prepare future workforce and this is twofold. Um, on the one hand side, we want to prepare people for the jobs of the future, and this will, be, this will have a lot to do with AI, so interacting with AI systems. And on the other hand, we also want to, um, to see how we can use AI also um, for education, for voca vocational training, and also for knowledge management in, in the enterprises. We have a couple of... Um, facts and figures about our, our working group. We have 36 experts, an OECD observer, eight specialists, and we are representing 23 uh, member countries of GPA. The three projects we want to present today um, are the three ongoing projects of our working group. The first one will be about the AI observation platform. Um, this is an initiative we started at the very beginning of our, of our work. Um, the idea was to, first of all, analyze how AI is today already used in the enterprises. And um, we started this initiative with a big survey in, in Europe, especially in France. Um, but then, then it was um, enlarged, and it was, the, the scope was widened, and we are now working with a new generation of junior investigators in Japan, and I think there will be um, an extra session about this um, student community later today. The second project is about AI for Fair Work. This is a project um, led by the University of Oxford. Um, we developed 10 principles 
They were developed through tripartite consultation and they will be published um, later this year. So we have really very valuable and significant results here. This will be presented by um, Callum Kant later um, today. And the third project, the I, I Living Lab, is something or somehow um, showcasing the results of the other two projects and maybe also um, showcasing the results of our other discussions. The idea of the AI, AI Living Lab is to provide tangible experiences of how AI could and should um, impact the future of work and how we can shape the future in a positive way. It will be uh, like a platform for transdisciplinary um, collaboration on AI topics for the future of work. So let's go. Um, let's move on to the to the first um, presentation, AI observation platform. The first project will be presented by Jan Ferguson. It will be a pre-recorded video, but he will be available after the talk for questions and answers. Um, Dr. Jan Ferguson is an expert. He is working at the University of Toulouse, and he's one of our most engaged um, experts in the group. So many thanks to Jan and. Um, Let's see his presentation. Hi, Tokyo. I am Jan Ferguson. I am a French sociologist, and I am a project leader of AI Observation Platform Project, and uh, will present uh, to you uh, what we did this year. So first of all, I would like to remain um, the project objectives. Um, we, are, we create uh, a collection of use cases generated by JPR expert, experts and JPI junior investigators. Uh, I will present the concept uh, later. So in this project, what we call a use case is an experimentation or deployment of an AI system in the workplace, resulting in observable, qualifiable, and measurable effects, particularly on workers. This project allows the experts of a working group to conduct further research and, for example, analyze the impact of cultural specificities and the way AI is implemented at the workplace, the possible changes in the way uh, in which AI systems are implemented from ongoing observations. So it is not a one short survey. Uh, we are trying to observe uh, the, how uh, the evolution of, uh, of the way uh, AI is integrated at the workplace. So uh, what, uh, what we did and uh, uh, from now, uh, first of all, we have 140 use cases that have been generated since the first interviews in 2020 and partly mapped around a constructive AI taxonomy. So we uh, have, have this, the, the, the use cases uh, thanks to a questionnaire, which is not an online questionnaire, but interviews, uh, one hour and a half interview with uh, the CEO, the provider, um, the end user, the manager, and the uh, representatives. And uh, the questionnaire have been uh, made and improved by integrating the objectives of committees uh, focused on training, biases, and human-machine interactions in order to make the survey more usable by the experts. But we also have five steady pillars uh, which did not change since 2020. So first pillar is motivations for AI system implementation. Second, participation of workers and the representatives in the process of defining, designing, and developing the AI system. Third pillar, role of human-machine interaction in the implementation of AI system. Fourth one, consideration of ethics in the design process. And the last pillar, the impact of AI system on employment, work, and organizations. We develop uh, two students' community uh, and the, the JPI Junior Investigators, uh, Investigators concept in uh, Europe, Canada, and the second in Japan. So a students' community is a set of JPI uh, Junior Investigators grouped in a team by country or even geography and coached by one or more uh, GPI experts, specialists, uh, ideally from the country or uh, geographical area in question. Informing the community of students, the working group had several goals. First one, of course, is to increase the number and quality of use cases in the catalog. 
Second one is to offer a high level international experience that enriches the student skills. And third one is to prepare the future generation of GPA experts. Um, what we still have to do, uh, we have to develop uh, the fourth students community in New Zealand in 2023. Uh, development of a prototype of the observation platform to integrate into the virtual living lab project and uh, the dissemination of the observation platform for the JPEG community and uh, more broadly the community of researchers interested in the impact of AI at work. One of the challenge for dissemination is to find the right trade-off between dissemination and privacy. This year in our report uh, we wanted to highlight students community work uh, so, uh, we present uh, the composition of, of uh, each generation of students' community. So, the first generation in 2021 was composed of five students from seven countries, and uh, they were able to uh, uh, produce uh, 30 use cases. Second generation, 10 students from Japan, 11 use cases. Third generation, a group of students from Japan. Fourth generation for 2023, a group of students from New Zealand. And we are still working on the idea of a fifth generation with a group of students from India. So the three first generations uh, use the same questionnaire dated over time based on feedback from different adversary group, training, a human machine interaction, and bias. We ask the first two students community to uh, work on the use case and to find connection between use case and UECD uh, principles. So they had to um, make a link uh, with the pillars of a questionnaire and this um, UECD principles. Uh, I remind them inclusive and uh, sustainable growth well-being, human values and fairness, uh, transparency, robustness and safety, and accountability. So they, st they all have to de describe an outstanding use case on each of these dimensions when it was possible, of course. So this is a, a quick overview uh, of a work. So um, first principle received uh, 12 mentions, human, machine, human values and fairness, uh, 10 mentions, transparency, seven mentions, robustness and safety, five mentions, accountability, five, uh, four mentions. So to conclude, um, I would like to give you two examples uh, of the work. So the first use case was a real-time translation system for video uh, conference that will be uh, useful uh, for uh, the GPI uh, Summit in Tokyo, of course. Uh, so the students make a link between this use case and inclusive and sustainable growth well-being principle. Uh, this is what they explain. Uh, the produce is developed with a clear vision set by the leader of a company. It will allow people from all over the world, including Japanese people, to usually go out into the world that they have not been able to enter before. Second use case, a prediction tool dedicated to the reduction of food uh, waste in school catering. Two prints, uh, we see the principle highlighted. Uh, transparency and sustainable growth. The system helps canteen staff to decide the number of meals to order uh, to the central um, kitchen. The main opportunity is to make more accurate estimation in order to avoid waste. The understanding of the system is very important. The users are provided with the main factors explaining the prediction. So this is the end of my presentation of, of our work. Thank you. And I'm ready to answer to your questions. Are there any questions here in the room? Sorry, this is not a great question, but thank you for the very good presentation. Uh, but I just wanted to know, can we get the slides? Will the slides all be online for, for this? It shouldn't be a problem, maybe. Um, yeah. 
will be will be made available. Okay. If there are other no other questions, I think we can proceed with the next um, presentation. Um, the next project. Um, can we move back to the slides, please? The next um, presentation is given by Dr. Callum Kant. He's a, he's a specialist for the area of work. Uh, he's, a, he's a specialist we, we um, hired especially for, for this uh, project. He's a postdoctoral researcher at the Oxford Internet Institute, and he will present our project on AI for fair work. So good morning, everyone, and thank you for the opportunity to present our work on the Fair Work for AI project. So for the last year, a research team based at the University of Oxford has been working on the questions of fairness that are raised by the deployment of AI systems in the workplace. Our goal has been to fill what we perceive to be a hole in the academic and policy literature, because whilst there have been many extensive and high level discussions of AI ethics and regulation, there have been very few attempts to translate these big ideas into concrete standards address the specific context of the workplace. And almost none of these have seriously prioritized the voices of people most directly impacted by workplace AI, that is to say, workers and their representatives. Our report, available today on the GPI Future of Work Working Group page, presents the results of our efforts. The report aims to try and translate the OECD recommendations on artificial intelligence into specific benchmarks that can be applied directly to the workplace. The resulting 10 principles lay out a framework for assessing the fairness of workplace AI. So now this framework has been established, the next challenge facing us is to encourage its implementation in practice. To achieve that, we're going to collaborate with Fair Work, another research team based at the University of Oxford, to conduct research into four UK-based firms utilising AI in the workplace in order to determine how fair or unfair their use of AI is. Our goal is to proactively engage with a range of stakeholders to develop and document good examples of best practice that can be drawn upon by a range of actors to guide the process of AI system development. In order to understand the principles we've settled on, um, I want to go into some detail on our methodology. So we began the project by conducting a literature review on questions of AI in the workplace. Now, first, we looked at 90 items, which range from statements of AI ethics to reports and research articles. We identified key themes and then conducted further sub reviews for each of these themes. By the end of the process, we'd reviewed 311 items. On the basis of this initial work, we developed a full first draft of the principles, which were then further developed through consultation with the experts of the Future of Work working group. This then resulted in the second version which was the basis on which we began external consultation. We then conducted two rounds of multi-stakeholder consultation on the principles themselves to ensure our benchmarks were reflective of the interests and experiences of all the relevant stakeholders. First, we conducted in-depth interviews with 21 stakeholders, ranging from Uber to Microsoft, the International Labour Organization, the UK Information Commissioner's Office, and the International Transport Trade Union Federation. We then redrafted the principles for a second time based on this feedback. Following that, we then conducted a broader survey. We still aimed to sample opinion from key global stakeholders, but we used the survey mechanism to reach a much larger audience. The survey was primarily qualitative data gathering with a few exceptions. So we received 111 responses to that survey and then made a final round of edits based on the data we gathered. So the result of that process are these 10 principles. If you take a look at the report, which I'd encourage everyone to do, uh, you can find detailed rationales for each of these alongside associated measurable benchmarks that can help any observer evaluate if an example of workplace AI does or does not conform to the relevant principle. Unfortunately, uh, we don't have time to go through each one of the principles here one by one. But what I would really like to do is highlight some of our key observations from the project. So we found during all our data gathering that regardless of who we talked to, there was often widespread agreement on basic principles, ideas like explainability, um, accountability, uh, transparency. All of these um, have been widely represented in the literature and were also widely present with the experts we were talking to. The challenge here in this space isn't so much to get people all on the same page in terms of ideas, but to get people on the same page in terms of practices. 
often we have an abstract commitment to the same ethical goals, but we may d disagree about how those are implemented. So we need mechanisms that can over, kind of get over that gap. Regulation is an obvious one, um, and it's an essential one, but it operates at a large scale with little consideration of specific contexts. A vital component of a fairness promoting infrastructure, but it's not a panacea. It doesn't cure all problems. We need specific approaches that balance the views of different stakeholders and account for the unique characteristics of each workplace. Now, collective bargaining is well suited to this role, hence our emphasis on it in principle 10. Our considered opinion is that this offers a way for the multiple stakeholders which have a role in the workplace to discuss and negotiate the practicalities of exactly how AI is used in a way which respects the rights of all stakeholders. Democratic co-determination in the workplace is essential for the fairness not just of questions of AI, but the fairness of the workplace in general. We find that this is probably our most unique contribution in terms of the widespread already existing AI ethics literature. We look at the specific issues that have been raised by multiple stakeholders in multiple different ways and see this as to be one of the ways of translating that into practice. Now, with that said, I want to present some more data from our survey, um, which might be of interest, which gives you an idea of what our stakeholders were prioritising in our discussions with them and in our surveys. Um, so now I should clarify, this isn't a representative sample of a larger population and we can't infer from our respondents to the global AI community at large. But the data we have here is interesting despite those limitations. So we asked all our survey respondents to rank the principles, which you saw earlier, from one to 10, with one being the most important and 10 being the least. We randomized the order in which they were presented with these. Um, and the idea was we wanted to ask them a question where they couldn't just say, oh yes, they're all very important, but they had to pick and choose. So what I want you to pay particular attention to is the, the rightmost column here. Um, so on average, uh, a lower score in that mean column um, means that it was rated as more important by participants. Um, and a higher score means it was scored as less important. So there are three principles which, on average, placed in the top half of the table. Those are guarantee fair work, a principle which states that AI-based fairness is not independent of other measures of fairness, and should be considered, for example, alongside the ILO decent work standards, um, standards for decent work. Second, we have advanced collective voice, which I've just discussed. And third, we have make fair des decisions, a principle which stresses the need for accountable, appealable and explainable decision making in the workplace, particularly given the capacity of AI systems to significantly change workers' experience of the labour process. So I think this is a really interesting starting point for a lot of our work from here. And in our future research, we want to map how these 10 principles interact with the complex reality of AI in the workplace. In part, this is going to be based on in-depth case studies where we go collect data, observe workplaces, interview technologists, interview managers and interview workers and understand how the messy reality fits onto our abstract schema. Um, but it'll also involve co cooperation with Fair Work, as I mentioned, to produce scores out of 10, where each principle equals a point, and we're attempting to evaluate already existing instances of AI deployment. So thank you so much for your time. Um, we're really looking forward to collaborating with you uh, and pursuing the goal of Fair Workplace AI. Um, and we'd be very, very interested to hear from you if you have any questions. So thank you so much. Are there any questions? Or maybe Callum, um, you said the, the principles are developed in a tripartite negotiation and you have, uh, but, uh, you have involved a lot of external experts. Is it still possible for experts to provide input or feedback? And if yes, how, how could um, the audience or other experts uh, still um, engage in this initiative? Hi everyone, I'm Tim Munio. Sorry, just give me a stop. Cool. Hi. All right. Um, so yes, hi everyone. Uh, it's very nice to be speaking to you. It's very early here in the UK. Uh, we'd absolutely love to continue the discussion. Um, unfortunately, these principles have now been published. Um, but we're all to have 
discussions and meetings. Um, if people are interested, uh, they can drop me an email. Um, which is an obvious mistake in retrospect, but if you just um, talk to the DSC, we can give you an email. Um, and yeah, we'd love to have ongoing um, discussions, both about how the principles look in future, but also about how we can collaborate um, to turn them into concrete and effective practice. Carlo, we had hard times understanding you. Maybe it's a, it's a problem in the connection. Um, have I understood correctly that if someone wants to um, to be involved in this initiative, they can just drop an email to you. Okay, thank you. Yes. <laughs> any other bro any other questions or comments? Thank you. Then we go on to the third project, and this will be presented live um, by Professor um, Uday Desai, um, the AI Living Lab. Uh, thank you, Matthias. Uh, can we get the slides? Uh, on? Ah, thank you so much. Uh, so this is a, a very different kind of a project. Many of the earlier projects involved surveys, talking to a large number of participants. Here, our objective is somewhat different. I'll just briefly. Uh, talk about the objectives first, and then we have a video recording of a demo which was done by the students. You know. So fundamental objective here was to create a living lab, you know, what we are calling as AI living lab. And in, in principle, I think it cu cuts across all the working groups that we have in GPE. Uh, this lab is basically to connect people, you know, both say in, in some sense in a virtual medium, people who are broadly involved with AI and in particular people who are involved with use of AI and effects of AI at the workplace. Uh, one of the other objectives will allow sharing of experiments that people have done. For example, Jan talked about earlier, the observation platform. That is something that we would like to share in a living lab as we go along once that whole observation platform project is over. We also would like to have various companies which are dealing with AI you know, coming forward and sharing their experiences. You know, maybe at times we also, the way you look at it in the demo a little later, that sometimes individual experiences can also be shared on this particular uh, platform. You know, there are built-in features, for example, which you find in many platforms, and here too also we have it. The chatbot is out there. Uh, there is a question and answer forum out here. So if there is a worker, working in an environment where a lot of AI activity has, and he has some opinion, she has some opinion, they can voice that particular uh, opinion out here and create a Q&A. Uh, educational videos also is what we'll put up, because one of the big thing as part of GPA is also you know, learning and skilling you know, with respect to AI, so that the workforce is up to date in terms of whatever AI technologies that are coming into play. Okay. Then there will be live sessions and many more things. The idea is it's, it's a dynamic platform. It's not a static platform that having done this, we will stop there. It, we can keep on adding features. In that sense, flexibility is there. Okay. So these are the broad objectives. As far as progress is concerned, what we thought for, uh, we have bro broken it up into several phases. The current phase that we will be presenting today, what we are calling as the mini AI living lab. Okay, that's what we'll present it, and I'll just briefly describe the uh, features of that lab, and then we'll go on to kind of develop it further. This was developed by a group of students, uh, some of them from India, particularly IIT Hyderabad, and there were a few students from France also who were involved. But in a broad sense, uh, at this forum, I would like to kind of uh, appeal that if there are others who would like to come forward and help us and participate, we uh, do look forward to it. What are the main features of the current presentation that we have, what we are calling as the mini uh, lab out here? You know, one is, I will not go into details. Anyway, the details will be covered during the presentation, during the demo video that we have. Uh, there's something called the innovation space, okay, where people can talk about various AI innovations you know, that they are looking at. Uh, there is, of course, a chatbot, as I talked about earlier. Use cases, you know, as part of our working group, we are looking at large number of use cases, and we will incorporate them. Some of them are demonstrated in uh, just the features are there today. 
you know, a lot more needs to be done out here. And again, this is a broader appeal. The use cases need not be limited to the use cases that are worked on by the future of work working group, but could be from any aspects. You know, could be part of GPA, even outside GPA, if we can get some interesting use cases after review, we can incorporate them. Build a community. I think this was one of the first things that we started with, and the other components were brought in as we went along. We would like to create this so-called AI community out here where they have a platform to talk to each other, to interact with each other, to learn from each other, you know, particularly as it relates to the work environment. Because after all, our working group focuses on future of work. Okay. Lab Connect. So various laboratories across the globe that are dealing with AI, we would like those laboratories also to be connected. Now, this is a very big task because not many will necessarily come forward and give access to the lab. So this is, as a group, not just future of work, but GPA should also look at it as to how we can motivate and how we can get access to various large labs. You know, big companies are there. They, all of them have big AI labs. Will they be willing to share? And we are looking at 24-7 like live broadcast of their living lab, of their uh, uh, AI lab. Uh, the other aspects are video connect, so two individuals can talk, not just two, multiple individuals can talk to each other. So in some sense, one can create a mini video conference on the platform itself, rather than going through Zoom or uh, any other, uh, or you know, WebEx or anything like that. You know? So that's one, but again, our thing is focused, that we are looking at primarily aspects dealing with AI. You know, look for experts. You know, if I'm working in a particular domain in AI, okay, and I would like to look for others who are also in a similar kind of a domain. Okay, so A, I can go to the chatbot, I can go to the Q&A forum, okay, and put out there. At the same time, I can look for experts within the living lab itself, you know. So that's another kind of connectivity uh, between experts that we can create, okay. Upcoming events. So we have done, gone through RSS feeds out here, and we are looking at, you know, where we can extract information and see what kind of AI activity is going on in UK, maybe in France, you know, maybe in US, etc. Of course, this depends on wherever we have RSS feed access. We are also looking at developing a web crawler, maybe using public domain software, so that we can actually crawl through the whole uh, internet space and extract events and activities which are happening in AI, particularly those related to the work environment. Fora is a short name that we have given to. We just kind of modified what we normally, all of us are familiar, called Quora, but this uh, primarily deals with uh, uh, Q and A kind of interaction, Q and A forum, okay? Then reels and events. So if I am doing something, I may not have a big lab, but I've done a small thing, I can put up a reel, okay, onto the platform, okay? So some of these are demoed in the features that come up right now. So this is the demo that is there. Okay, so how do I get the demo going? I just press forward. Sorry? Just forward, okay. Yeah. The idea is to connect people innovators from different parts of the world working in the domain of artificial intelligence and machine learning. Through this, we'll make knowledge accessible to industry and academics and collaborate to create a better world. You can join the community either as a professor, industry, as an enthusiast. To register, you need to just sign up and once you sign up, you can go and log into the page. In the home page, you will be able to access content related to AI in form of reels, posts and highlights of the day. The current highlights across different countries in AI are also gathered on the platform. For more information, you can click off, click on any of the given links. In addition, you will also be informed about the upcoming events. You can always save the interesting posts and share them with other enthusiasts. To guide users through the platform and answer a few doubts, we have incorporated a chatbot. In chatbot, we have also included a speech to text converter, which can take queries by speech. This chatbot can respond to basic messages and also we have already pre-answered few things. 
the chatbot tries to answer the queries based on the extracted content utilizing react js and nlp modules from the home page you can access multiple features like peer connect use cases look for experts community innovation space and forum let us go through each of these in detail to start off with we have live lab live lab is a space for individual contributors and labs to interact and collaborate with various academic labs here the allowed members can access the live feeds of labs and interact with them one can share the labs using camera host link this helps in exchange of lab cultures and enriches the living lab experience next we have peer connect here you can connect through video chat to discuss with a connected expert or peer you can search them and directly call or chat with them to have one on one conversation as you can see you can call existing user and you can also chat with them next let's move on to use cases in use cases you can explore different use cases such as ai in healthcare ai for firefighters ai for manufacturing etc as an expert in the domain you will be able to add a use case for others in the community to be able to learn and build on it by clicking the download files you can access a report relevant to the topic which will contain documents images and summary of the project to help you understand it this will show how communities from different backgrounds could leverage ai in their respective domains next going to look for experts here one can search people by domain or relevant interest area it will help you get the guidance from the expert people from top universities and industries will be a part of this channel the contacts are clustered based on domain interest you can share the respective interest mail to several people in one click by clicking on the check box next we have the community page in the community tab a registered person in the community can invite others to join that will form a sense of trust and reliability in the community and help the community grow one can share it with any type of social media apps like facebook whatsapp telegram and twitter then we'll move on to the innovation space innovation space lets you explore ongoing research and innovations in various leading industries and environments you can search and select any industry to view the research profile by clicking on any companies portal will be able to navigate to the research work and learn more about their current innovations then at the end we can go to the fora place for one can post the relevant doubts and answers in different ongoing threads this helps the enthusiasts of ai interact and help each other grow experts in the domain can guide the enthusiasts this work is still under progress now to finish off the living lab is not just a website which is part of gpy this is a community for anyone who is any way related to ai and there is a constant need of people to make it a platform thank you can i get the slides back please So uh, this gives you just a brief perspective on the phase one, and then we have three more phases, that is phase two, phase three, and phase four, which will cover different aspects and keep on enhancing the 
whatever work that we showed you today and add a lot more features to it. Okay, I won't run down through the whole list. I think this is a kind of a lot of enumeration is there. And anyway, the slides will be available to everybody. Uh, you can look it up and get the uh, perspective. What I would like to spend a little bit of time is the next thing is, see, what you saw today is a demonstration of, of phase one of the mini AI living lab. Okay, and the success of any kind of a platform or any kind of a living lab depends on content. Now, the developers which are there at IIT Hyderabad and we, the support that we get from students in Paris, uh, in France, you know, will do all the back-end work and create some content. But the content development, I, my feeling is that, and this is my perspective, others may, of course, uh, disagree with me, I think it is the responsibility of whole, whole of GPA. Because no one small group of people can create content. That's a much, much larger job. Okay, so we need extreme you know, lots of help from all GPA uh, uh, working groups, all GPA members, okay, from Europe, UK, US, Canada, all the 25 countries that we are out there, in giving us content so that the living lab becomes a rich, you know, and filled with interesting content. Otherwise, it'll become a fairly, you know, mundane lab unless there is some great content and we seek your help for it. We need help with use case documentation. Our working group is looking at some use cases. There are about four, three, I, I don't remember the exact number. I think uh, Matthias is handling it. I think maybe about four of them right now. We need a lot more. Four is a very small number when you're looking at the whole AI domain across the globe. So we need, again, help with use cases where you can come forward and say, okay, here is a use case I came across. Let's put it on the living lab, and we'll love that. Okay, we need help from GPA members and friends of GPA members to be invited to register in the lab. As you saw here, see, one is open registration, that anybody can come and register, but what we fall, felt that that time we may have, you know, spurious people coming in and create all kinds of, you know, uh, other issues. So it's good that if people are invited. So here we will need, again, help from GPA members and your own friends to come forward and say, okay, I'm going to register myself. The larger the number of people we register, the larger the community is, the more interesting the living lab gets. You know. Basically, in a nutshell, I would say we need help in building the AI community in the living lab platform. You know. We need help with Q&A. We talked about a chatbot. Right now we have put some about five or ten questions which are there that we thought of. Now a small group of you know, five, seven, eight students sitting there, how many, how many questions can they think of? Okay. So again, we need help from the whole GPA community Okay, and even friends of GPA to give us questions and corresponding answers. And that's how chatbot is built. Okay. So we would like to do that. Even if you give a question that is good enough, we will try to come up with the answers. Either we'll find answers ourselves or we'll look at the AI community and see if we can find answers. So this is one big message that I wanted to get across in today's sum, uh, summit, that the help is required in building the content. So thank you very much, and we are open for questions, any comments, any suggestions that you could have. Either from online participants, I don't know, it's probably midnight or early morning in Europe, so you won't have too many. <laughs> okay, we have a few in the audience. Thank you. Hello, I have another uh, stupid question, especially since I came in late. How do we let you know? How do we participate? Is there a URL? Yeah, I think one simple way is that you can just send email to Edward. He's sitting out here. I think he's coordinating a lot of the activities at the Secretariat as far as the working group is concerned. And I, I would suggest he can be the uh, point of contact, and then he'll inform us. Okay. That would be easier because I think uh, uh, probably many people do have access to the Secretariat. Yeah. So I would put, say, uh, put something on Twitter and put something on sure. LinkedIn, and then if you tag us, we'll promote it. You sure. know, yeah, so, we'd love so to that'll help. We Thank can you. do this. Yeah, we'll do that. I think you know we'll take a note of it and we'll put it on. Uh, maybe even the JPI uh, homepage, we'll put some link out there, as well as as you said, whatever Twitter, other places to, and we'll put the list also the, where the help is required, and accordingly people can come forward and help us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dai, and thanks to your students. Oh, no. well, yeah. well done. Uh, just regarding contents you mentioned, because you have already in your hands uh, about observatory platform use cases, and I have to know much in, in depth how you plan to migrate 
all the use cases from observatory platform to the on the living lab or vice versa. What is your planning? Sorry, I didn't get the last part. I'm sorry. Um, because we have already so many use cases. About four or five the, is the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yans. 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 Yans is uh, there, I think, uh, firefighting. Exactly. And other so, so, how you, what is your planning oh, to yeah. make uh, available all these use cases on your living lab? Sure. Or how you're planning to expand your. Yeah. So, as you saw in the demo, there is a use case uh, section. And we already have those I, uh, kind of active icons for three use cases, healthcare, firefighting, and I think there was one more which I'm forgetting at the moment. Okay, And we will add out there. So Jan's case also, you know, the, the observation platform will be added out there in, some, in, a, in a way. And the documentations will be available. The documents could be, you know, just uh, PDF files, could be reports, you know, could be, you know, data from the survey that we have conducted. It depends on the use case community as to what they are willing to put it up. Because our task is not to modify that. We will simply make it available. Okay. And uh, if there are any videos also, they can add the videos. So I would say as and when, when we get use case uh, material, we will keep uploading it out here you know, and make it available. I think what another thing we could do, and this is something we can discuss in our plenary, is how do we make this uh, mini lab now accessible to people so people can start giving feedback, you know, whatever, positive, negative, you know, et cetera. So I think we can look at how we can go about it in our next uh, uh, plenary meeting. Thank you um, so much. Would I, uh, just one uh, comment, because I think um, you comment uh, all the very many use cases they have collected in France and Japan and so forth. Yes. Oh, all and of them, yeah. Oh, OK, sorry, I misunderstood then. So I would suggest that the same use case information could be conveyed to Edward rather than going all over the place. And we will take it from Edward and incorporate it into our living lab. Is that what you're yep. looking at? Yeah. yeah, but I think the, no. the main challenge would be because the format in which um, Jan and his team and, 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 yeah. and the, the, all the students' community, they collected the use cases. It's more descriptions. It's more um, replies from interviews. So it's a more, yeah, let's say, um, information, written information. And what we are after for the living lab would be something very impressive so that you can really experience how AI at the workplace could feel or could look like. And this needs a, a certain transformation uh, or let's say a, a certain translation. Um, and uh, this is, I think, what, what you meant. I think yeah. this would okay. be a challenge for us to sure. think about how can we um, maybe select the, the most impressive use cases and how can we uh, prepare them for presentation and in the living lab. Now, see, this, uh, the team that I have cannot quite do that part. I think that has to be a separate team, which uh, from what I understand is that, yes, for example, in the Jan's work on observation platform and yuko -san is involved with it. So whatever material we have, now how can that material be made more presentable so people who access it will be kind of, will understand it much better rather than just raw documentation. Now, we need some team to do that. I don't think, because what will happen is, you know, if my team also, A, they are students, they are by and large, they are te technology people, and it is best if Jan's team itself can to to do it. Because if you give the task to somebody else, there is a issue that it, some things may get lost in modifying it, because, you know, Jan and yuko -san may have something in mind, and the person who does this, a uh, little more impressive presentation may miss out on certain things or misrepresent certain things. That's perhaps a little more bigger risk. So my suggestion would be that the team which is working on the use case, they could have one presentation kind of a module, you know, and the other could be the simple documentation, the detailed documentation. You know, that's my suggestion. So that's why this, this particular project is much bigger than any of the sub-projects that we normally come across in GPA because it, it requires in eventually participation of a much larger community than a small group of people doing something. I hope that answers your question, yuko -san. My opinion, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> any other questions? Any comments, in fact? Because this is still work in progress. So we would love to hear from you as to how, what we can do to improve the living lab. Okay. okay. So if there are no comments or questions, 
I will close my presentation here. Thank you very much once again. Thank you, Uday, and thanks to all the other presenters. Um, are there any general remarks, general comments, maybe from online or from in the room? So I think then we can close the session. Thanks to all of you for attending, for your um, discussion, and uh, for the interesting feedback. Um, thanks to Uday and all the other presenters, and uh, thanks to all of you. See you later. <laughs>